Hey everyone, Dr. Ryan here, and thank you so much for checking out my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm really excited to share something that I think will really revolutionize the way you learn about dentistry. So often the students and the doctors who I talk with ask me, Dr. Ryan, how can I remember everything that I've watched in your videos? And how can I stop forgetting everything that I've already learned? And I've done a few coaching videos discussing those exact questions, but in this video, I wanna introduce a really cool AI platform that is specifically built to help you remember what you learned, and it's called Wisdolia. Wisdolia is a flashcard and multiple choice question generator that takes PDFs and videos and gives you active learning tools, powered completely by artificial intelligence. Let me show you how it works. So here we are on my YouTube channel, and let's say we're studying endodontics. We have a big board exam coming up. Endodontics is a crucial part of that, and we need to learn all of the high yield information that the board exam covers. So we watch this video, and the lecture's pretty good, I hope, and we learned some cool things about pulp biology and tooth pain. But you really want to lock this in your brain. And a great way to do that is to test what you just watched. And here's where Wisdolia comes in. So let's copy the video link and let's head over to wisdolia.com and paste that video link right here on the website's homepage. We'll click on this little arrow, and now the AI wizards of Wisdolia go through the transcript of the video. We can name the deck whatever we want. Let's just call it the name of the video, which we can find right here, and start learning. And now, thanks to Wisdolia, we have a ton of fun things to try out. First, we have the summary outline. This is a concise, well-organized summary of all the core points from the video. We have a bunch of different definitions, the pulp dentin complex, pulp defense mechanisms, pain pathways, pulp biology, and truly a wonderful breakdown of all of the most important high yield facts from the video. This can help you do a quick review to help you become comfortable before answering the practice questions. Very, very cool. Let me adjust the size of the screen real quick so we can see the bottom as well. We'll hit continue to go back to, back to the main section. And then we have multiple choice questions. These help you build some momentum early on and build confidence with the material. So let's try one. In endodontics, what dynamic response occurs when odontoblasts lay down new dentin to form a barrier and defend the pulp? A, odontoblasts undergo apoptosis. B, the tooth loses sensitivity. C, the pulp becomes necrotic. And D, odontoblasts lay down reactionary or reparative dentin. Well, if I were to look at those four options, I feel most confident with D. If we select that, we get positive feedback. We got the question correct. Let's try another question here. What type of nerve fibers are responsible for conducting pulpitis pain characterized by dull throbbing pain? Is it C fibers, D fibers, A delta fibers, or B fibers? So if we go back to the content covered in the video and in that summary outline, we know that A-delta fibers and C-fibers are both related to tooth pain. A-delta is that sharp, quick, immediate pain, whereas C-fibers is more that dull, long, throbbing pain. So let's say we were a little bit confused about that and we selected A-delta fibers by mistake. So now Isdolia is going to go ahead and not only tell us what the correct answer was, but why we got it wrong and why C-fibers is the correct answer. 
It's amazing to me that you saw this in real time. Wisdolia took the video transcript and came up with 15 multiple choice questions in a matter of seconds. So you don't have to wait around a whole long time to utilize this amazing resource. So let's go back to the main section once again. And next, let's look at the free response questions. These are great for helping us learn the main key concepts of the video. And it'll also group the questions into, in this case, the five key concept areas from the video. So this time, instead of just recognizing the right answer, we're actually going to be given the opportunity to type a free response answer. This one asks, how does the technique of pulp capping contribute to protecting the dental pulp? Let's just say using a pulp cap material, we'll even throw in like calcium hydroxide, allows the tooth pulp to respond by placing down reparative or reactionary dentin. And let's see the feedback that it gives us. So it tells us what we got right. You correctly identified that pulp capping involves using materials like calcium hydroxide to stimulate the formation of reparative or reactionary dentin. It also gives us additional information that wasn't included in the answer. Pulp capping specifically stimulates odontoblasts, which are cells responsible for dentin formation, thus creating a protective barrier for the dental pulp. So, so cool that it gives detailed feedback tailored to the answer that I provided. And then down here, I can say, do I feel okay with the answer, not sure, or I know this question very well. Okay, let's try a different question from a different key concept area. This one asks, how does reparative dentin differ from reactionary dentin in terms of formation and function? So let's say, you know, I remember something to do with odontoblasts and odontoblast-like cells, but let's say, you know, I'm really confused about this one and um, reparative and reactionary dentin are the same thing. So let's say we answer that. Let's wait for some feedback. And this time it says what you got wrong. Reparative and reactionary dentin are not the same thing. They differ in their formation and function. In fact, reparative dentin is a response to major damage while reactionary dentin forms after minor damage. Reparative dentin repairs significant injuries. Reactionary dentin reinforces the dental wall in less severe cases. So it does a nice job summarizing the different functional role of these two different forms of tertiary dentin. Now, by the way, if you ever don't like a question that you're given, it's repetitive or it doesn't seem like it applies, we can always click on this broom icon right up here to remove the card from the deck. Now let's do another one real quick. Let me just say, um, how does the cell rich zone differ from the cell free zone? One has cells, the other doesn't. I'll just do a really quick answer here. Um, I want to show you how cool this is in terms of the feedback. Let's say I read this answer and I still don't really understand the difference there. I can click this button to literally chat with the document. So I could say, I don't, understand the difference between cell rich and cell free zones. In the document, you can see I tried it before with the other question. This document will reply back to us and it gives us some more detail. In the pulp dentin complex, the cell rich zone contains numerous nuclei indicating a higher cellular presence and involvement in metabolic activities. And it goes on and gives us some nice contrast. So really cool to have that option to, again, essentially generate conversation with the video transcript itself. Now, after going through all these, let's say we're you know done reviewing a core concept and we click on this button here, close my understanding. By doing that, it'll actually generate a cool analogy to help explain the concepts in a creative way and help us better understand the big picture. 
So this says, let's consider Pope Denton complex through a fortress defenses analogy. So it likens the Denton to castle walls, like the sturdy castle walls providing the first line of defense for the fortress, which is the tooth formed by odontoblast. These walls have to be strong to protect the inner royalty. I like that the pulp from the outside invaders, bacteria and injury. And then it talks about predentin acting like the castle moat, the odontoblastic layer as the archers, the cell free zone as the secret passage. Oh, that's pretty cool. Pulp core as the throne room. So it gives you this really cool analogy that you could read about and it would make things a little easier and more fun to remember for later when you're taking the test. So let's go back once again to the main section and let's keep going through here. So we did the multiple choice questions to see if we can recognize the right answer. We did the free response questions to see if we could come up with the right answer on our own. And lastly, we have probably my favorite section of this entire platform, the case scenarios. And these are great to apply your knowledge in different clinical contexts. So let's go through one of these. Dr. Smith examines a patient, Alex, who complains of severe toothache in the lower molar region. The pain intensifies when consuming hot beverages. Radiographs show deep caries, but no visible pulp exposure. Alex's medical history is non-contributory. What endodontic procedure should Dr. Smith consider first for Alex? Well, we have some deep caries, potentially might involve the pulp tissue, especially if we're getting this hypersensitive reaction to hot. So maybe one thing we could do is test the tooth to see if it responds similarly in a clinical context. Let's say the first procedure that should be done is performing a diagnostic test of the teeth in question to isolate which tooth may be contributing to the symptoms. And let's submit that answer. What you got right, performing a diagnostic test to isolate the problematic tooth is a good first step. The specific endodontic procedure mentioned should be indirect pulp capping, not just a diagnostic test. Okay, so thinking a little further along the line, indirect pulp capping is done to protect the pulp and promote tertiary dentin formation, which was one of the things that we talked about in the video. And then it provides, in addition to the feedback, the answer that it was hoping for. And the cool thing about these case scenarios is that they continue and they provide multiple questions regarding the same story. So once again, we have Alex with the severe toothache, the pain intensifies when consuming hot beverages. We have deep caries, no visible pulp exposure, all the same things there. If untreated, what is the likely progression of Alex's dental condition? If no treatment is conducted, Alex will likely experience, let's just say irreversible pulpitis with symptomatic apical periodontitis. You correctly identified that untreated pulpitis can progress. You did not mention the potential for pulp necrosis, which is a key stage in the progression of dental disease, which is very true. Untreated pulpitis can lead to the need for endodontic treatment or tooth extraction. And again, showing you the answer that I was hoping for. So, so, so cool that it's able to take the information that I presented in the lecture and create actual cases that apply that knowledge. After a nice little study session, you can view your learning progress for this video and see where you have deep understanding, where you're progressing, and where there's room for improvement. And then, of course, the areas that we skipped over in this demonstration. Now, if we go all the way back to the home page, based on how we answered the questions, Every single day, we'll get a new spaced repetition review for continued active learning to resurface material that may have been lost otherwise to the forgetting curve. And of course, 
You can organize your decks by video, by series, and stay organized with that as well. Now, if you really enjoy the platform, which I really think you will, you can choose to upgrade to the premium version. We'll click on upgrade to premium. Now with the free version, which we were just using, you can upload up to 10 times per month. So you can generate up to 10 sets of flashcards per month. You can upload PDF documents up to 10 pages long or YouTube videos up to 10 minutes long or 10 minutes from a longer YouTube video. And each upload will get you multiple choice questions, key concept questions, and one case scenario. Again, what we were just looking at. For the Megamind level, you can upload up to 40 times per month, up to 100 pages per PDF document, or up to an hour long YouTube video, which would cover most of my YouTube content. Each upload will get you three times more questions than you saw here, and multiple case scenarios to cover all the topics in the document. And then with the super learner tier, you can upload unlimited times, unlimited pages, and unlimited length YouTube videos. And in addition to getting essentially unlimited questions and case scenarios, you also get automatic image occlusion where you can upload a labeled diagram or table and use them to generate flashcards and questions. Monthly and yearly plans are available as well. So if this interests you and you want to get started for free, click the link in the description of this video or in the pinned comment to get started with Wisdolia. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next video.